10 spoken narc grenades. We must assert control over you and invariably obtain fuel from you. We do this by provoking you. And one of the ways that this happens is for us to lob a spoken knock grenade in your direction. I'm going to describe to you 10 of these such knock grenades that can be deployed by any scub school of narcissist. Pay attention. Some you'll have heard, some you need to look out for. The purpose of all of them is a quick and effective way of asserting control over you directly and to draw fuel from you by making you react. 10. Spoken Knock Grenades Number 1. You Never This is the precursor to some kind of criticism about how you do not do something for the narcissist. It is a twin explosive assault against you because not only do I tell you that you are failing me by not doing something for me, I also choose something that you actually do carry out by suggesting that you no longer do a particular act or say a certain thing, when, in all likelihood, you actually do. Thus, the intention of this grenade is to leave you speechless with exasperation and confused as to just how I can say such a thing. Of course, our sense of entitlement enables us to do this. With lesser and mid-range, they're blinded to the fact that you do these things because in that moment, the narcissism rewrites history. So, in the mind of the narcissist, you never have done any of those things. And your protestations to the contrary just challenge the narcissist further. Of course, the greater and ultra know that you've done these things, but we don't care. We're perfectly content to provoke you and toy with you. And notice the use of never. This is common with narcissists because we think in absolutes. Not, oh, you occasionally do things, or sometimes you do things, but rather, you never. And that is far more effective, and it belies our black and white thinking. Number two, you always. The flip side of the first one, and likely to be tossed in your direction not long after the first narc grenade. The allegation of you always will be followed by some put-down and criticism, highlighting a behavioural trait of yours which we deem entirely unsatisfactory. Once again, this is exhibiting our sense of entitlement to speak about you in this way. The revision of history, where dealing with a lesser or mid-range narcissist, and done unconsciously, and the revision of history done consciously by the greater or the ultra-narcissist. Again, in talking in terms of absolutes, rather than you occasionally do, or it has been known from time to time, you always, suggesting that you always behave in this bad way, which causes considerable affront to you, offends your truth-seeking trait, offends your honesty, offends your decency, and therefore provokes you to react. We highlight something that you do and turn it against you. We find something that you don't do and turn it against you. And it's done to control you, to perplex you. You will, of course, react unaware that this is a narcissist that is provoking you. And you auto automatically, with your emotional thinking running high, corrupting those traits of honesty, decency and truth-seeking, defend yourself against this scandalous accusation. And all you're doing is giving us control and fuel. Number three, I'm sick of you controlling me. Thrown at you in order to project our own rampant control of you. This is often used as well, particularly by mid-range narcissists, to deflect any criticism of us when you chastise, chastise us for certain behaviour. So, for example, if you point out the error of our ways, or even try to do so in a constructive way to help us, you will be met with this response. Your attempt to point out the error of our ways challenges us. It threatens our control. You trying to say that we're doing something wrong threatens our control. And therefore, from our perspective, 
we actually do believe, where lesser and mid-range, that you are trying to control us. Where greater or ultra, we still see it as an attempt to control, but not a successful one. We perceive that you are trying to control us, and that you are trying to break our own control of you. Again, the lesser and mid-range narcissist doesn't know about that need to control you. Either way, we cannot allow this to happen. It is through our control of you that we gain what we want from you, and therefore any threat to this must be met with something that will knock you off balance. Accordingly, accusing you of the very thing that we are doing with this great big dose of projection in this particular narc grenade will cause such astonishment and consternation that our aim is fulfilled. Number four, my ex would not do this. A narc grenade of triangulation, and who better to do it in relation to than your predecessor? By implying that your predecessor has some form of superiority to you, after all the smearing of her name we did when we first ensnared you, not only will you be taken aback by this rampant hypocrisy in Volfast, you will also be mightily offended at being compared to someone who we apparently hate so viciously. Drawing you down to her or his apparent low level will allow us to assert control and will invariably bring forth a reaction from you. Number five, my ex would do it. Another flip side, whereby we are seeking to coerce you to do something for us, something which you are evidently reluctant to do, and your reluctance threatens our control. You have reservations, and from your perspective, no doubt with good reason, but that doesn't matter to us because of our sense of entitlement, lack of accountability to your welfare, and absence of emotional thinking. You are our extension. You belong to us. Objectification and seeing others as an extension of ourselves – and therefore you ought to be complying with our wishes, without hesitation or refusal. By triangulating you again with she or he who went before you, we are threatening you that you are inferior to her or him, and raising the prospect that you will be soon dispensed with if you do not do what we want. 6. I love you, but I don't like you right now. This carefully crafted narc grenade will shatter you as it appears as a compliment before ripping your heart out as you struggle to comprehend what on earth we have just said. Surely if we love you, then we must also like you. What do we mean by saying this? It is actually utter nonsense. A small word salad narc grenade. It creates confusion and will have you trying to persuade us that we must both love and like you, and to get us to explain what it is that we meant. Again, your emotional thinking corrupting your truth-seeker trait. What we actually mean when we throw this grenade towards you is, you say that you love me, but you don't do what I want, therefore I doubt that you love me. And therefore, what I'm going to do is say, I do love you, but I don't like you, because you're threatening my control. And this is being done with this word salad, to provoke you into responding to demonstrate to me that you are under control. Number seven, if you loved me. We recognise that you're a love devotee. A passionate supporter and believer in the concept of love. And we use this as a grenade to bring about a compliance. We know that you take pride in your integrity and decency and therefore... You have standards to always uphold. By suggesting that your failure to act in the manner we want or that you're disagreeing with us is somehow representative of you loving us less, we are challenging what you stand for, and thus this provocation asserts control over you. This invariably forces you to react by stating your case, reacting in an emotional fashion, and ultimately doing what we want in order to prove that you do indeed love us. Thus control is obtained, Fuel is provided. And number eight, you are overreacting. A favourite to make you react even more. You do take matters seriously, and there are many things that we do which will cause you to respond in a serious and concerned fashion. And by using this grenade, we belittle you and cause the issue to be about your reaction and deflecting from what we have actually done. It acts as a brilliant way to deflect discussion and dissection of our behaviour and instead causes you to try to prove that you're not overreacting, which will invariably result in further challenges which we will put down and a heightened response from you with regard to fuel provision. Number nine. 
I can't deal with this right now. Our grenade that is thrown in order to provide us with an escape route from any crisis or situation that requires us to either be accountable or supportive. In effect, we withdraw and assert control that way. We are neither accountable or supportive, and we want to keep it this way. We will invent some other reason which means that we have to depart, or that you have to deal with the situation as we hurl the grenade, leaving you to catch it and deal with the subsequent explosion, as we, as always, walk away free from involvement, free from responsibility, free from culpability, and free from accountability. We have asserted control, and your desperate shouts behind us provide us with fuel as we depart. Number 10. I don't remember. The blast from this grenade is used to eradicate the problem that you are facing us with. We delete. Whether it is an accusation that we have failed to do something, or evidence of misbehaviour, this grenade is a fail-safe way of enabling us to escape the problem. Often it will be used even when it is blatantly clear that we can remember, making your flabbergasted reaction all the more satisfying. There may be irrefutable evidence that a greater or ultra-narcissist is aware of and can remember, but this won't stop us from hurling this grenade at you and making good our escape from your attempt to blame us. You are not allowed to pin accountability on us, for to do so would be to threaten our control, and that can never happen. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.